You're watching One on One Sports, hosted by Eric Kendall and Christian Binder, with resident experts Tom Waterman, Greg Brzezowski, and Alex Rosenbaum, Billy O'Reardon, and Josh Norris. Robert Woner and Michael Heil. Paulo De La Belle and Alex Sharon. Christine Williams and Aaron Moger. Welcome to One on One Sports. Hello and welcome to the season finale of One on One Sports. I'm Greg Brzezowski. And I'm Christine Williams. It's mine and Greg's first time as host, so let's get things going. Here are your starting five. Roger Goodell promised the city of Indianapolis that despite the current labor stoppage in the NFL, Super Bowl 46 will take place this year at Lucas Oil Stadium. Christine, with the 2011 season in jeopardy, do you think that the commissioner is just trying to distract people from the possible lockout? Actually, I really don't. I think he's just trying to reassure the Indiana mm -hmm. Indianapolis fans that they will have uh, a Super Bowl at some point. He promised it to them. They were looking forward to it for, for two years. So I think it's a good thing that he's like looking this far in the future. I mean, he's hoping that they're going to have the, a season and Absolutely. all. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's good for him to stay positive. He's Absolutely. the commissioner. That's his role right now. He is the face of this league, and he needs to make sure that the fans are mm -hmm. optimistic about having this season. If he goes out with a negative saying, saying that the league is, is going to be messed up and that there's going to be no mm -hmm. season, no Super Bowl, mm -hmm. then that's going to look really terrible. So he has to do everything, sales the right things even if it's not true at the time even if it doesn't look good for this mm -hmm. situation to be happening right now he has to go out and be confident and be a very very strong I, face I totally for the league. I totally agree. I totally agree. Yes. This season the Los Angeles Lakers ended much sooner than they would have liked by getting swept by the Dallas Mavericks in the second round making this the first postseason series the team has lost in two years. Greg what do you make of the Los Angeles dynasty under Kobe after this loss. Well, it, it was a tremendous run. There's mm -hmm. only been th four teams in NBA history that have gone on to three-peat mm -hmm. uh, for the winning an NBA title. And, and you think how unbelievably hard that is to do. And this team came close. Yes, they ended terribly, and this was an awful way to go out mm -hmm. for this team to lose and, and possibly ruin this dynasty. It's not officially dead yet, no, but not. it does not Definitely look good. Not. Yes. But you really think they won two titles, went to the NBA Finals three years in a row, and were able to build something Absolutely. incredibly special, getting Absolutely. Phil Jackson his 11th NBA title. They really have put on a tremendous showing. And in a league where there's more teams and more competition, you have to really be amazed at what they've done. Definitely. They've been mm -hmm. the most dominant team throughout this yeah. entire decade. This dynasty is not dead. They, sure, they're getting a little old now, and they're going to have to rebuild. And with Phil mm -hmm. Jackson saying he's leaving, uh, you, I mean, they're going to have to rebuild. But right now, I mean, they were the most dominant team in this decade. Absolutely. So the dynasty is fine. Yeah, they're going to have to bring in some new players. Dwight Howard, maybe? Yeah, we'll have to yeah. see. The NHL is looking to find another one-year interim owner for the Phoenix Coyotes until the league can sell the franchise to an ownership group that would keep the team in Glendale. Christine, the team isn't making much money and doesn't have that strong of a fan base. Could you see the Coyotes possibly moving to a team maybe in the Great White North? Actually, yes. I think it's a great really? idea for them to move to Canadian, uh, to a Canadian city because Okay, they're in they're in the middle of a desert. Yes. You can't really sell hockey in the middle of a desert. They yeah. have like no no fan base, absolutely. They're they're bankrupt. And even though the team's been winning over the past two seasons, they still have no fans. If you can't have fans while you're winning, they should move to somewhere in, in Canada, like Winnipeg, Quebec City wants a team. Mm -hmm. Toronto would like a second team. I mean, the <laughs> Toronto Maple Leafs are terrible. Feel a little greedy so. also, yeah. <laughs> but so I, I definitely think they should. If they would be appreciated there. The, the team deserves a chance to be mm -hmm. appreciated. Uh, appreciated is the key word, I think, mm -hmm. in that. And, and while I do agree, it would be a strong move to move the team to Canada. You can't give up on Phoenix yet. Look, I know the move down south mm -hmm. for hockey hasn't worked out tremendously yet, as none of these franchises have really caught on as a strong fan base team. But the Coyotes have a presence now. Now they're developing they something, an and if they owner. can find a strong owner, and they're trying to get something, the NHL is working really hard to get them a strong ownership. If they could get somebody who's going to invest money it's in the team, then it's going to be a it's beneficial not situation. Last. Oh no. 
Washington Redskins quarterback Donovan McNabb has been training with the Arizona Cardinals this offseason. Greg, do you think McNabb should be training with a team that he's not signed to? Look, if the NFL was all set to be playing its schedule next year and training camps were working out, this would be awful. This would be mm -hmm. a terrible situation, especially for the Redskins and for McNabb looking uh, on his character. But we're basically throwing out all the rules right now exactly. with how this league exactly. is. He is able to do whatever he wants. He lives in Arizona. Let the guy practice with the Cardinals rather than to go out to Washington, a franchise who, let's face it, did not give him much respect last year with Shanahan benching him for Rex Grossman, Rex Grossman and all signs ridiculous. pointing to Grossman starting this season as well. I think it's totally fine for him as well. Yeah. I, I, he's, it's like he's practicing with friends. It's just a, a couple of guys going out there playing some pickup games. It's exactly. not like he's the only one. Todd Heap was also invited. Mm -hmm. So I, it was... I think it's fine for them. It's, it's good for them to stay in shape, getting ready for whenever they decide to play again. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to practice with real professionals. He's looking, exactly. he, he's probably looking for a new team. So he definitely, um, he needs to be in shape and show that he has what it takes, even though he's getting older exactly. and just needs to practice. Yeah, the player's got to do something to work out, especially with this lockout. They, you know, need to mm -hmm. get set up. Jason Bay missed time on the field last week for the New York Mets, not because of injury, but because he was on paternity leave. Christine. Baseball has had some famous and pretty funny leaves of absence and injuries over its years. What's your favorite, though? I have to, I'm going to go back to last year. Okay. Derek Lee in spring training, sitting down to lunch in the Cubs clubhouse, mm -hmm. just having lunch, and the chair collapses on him. I'm sure we all remember this. The chair just <laughs> collapses out of nowhere. <laughs> he ends up hurting his back and going uh, and not being able to finish the game. Well, okay, I'm not really sure if that says something about the maintenance crew or if that's just a freak accident or if Derek Lee's getting a little too much weight. <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on with that. So that would have to be one of my weirdest that I've seen lately. In keeping with troubled Cubs, my favorite had to be when Sammy Sosa yes. sneezed so hard that he completely had injured himself, <laughs> strained a muscle, and had to miss time on the deal. Missed two games, actually. A incredibly funny. It mm. just shows how further cursed the Cubs really are that all these freak injuries happen to them. And baseball in general. It's Exactly. It's cursed. very comical and we'll keep laughing at it. Well, it's time for us to take our first time out, but when we return, Greg will be joined by our resident MLB experts. Should the Mets trade Jose Reyes? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> 